Hello, my name is Rohan Paul and very welcome to my computer vision and deep learning YouTube channel. Let's get started. So this video is about image augmentation technique using the very popular package called Albumentation. And as you probably know that before feeding your deep neural network uh, with the input images, augmenting the training images is one of the most commonly used practice. And for the data set of input images, that is my training images, I'll be using uh, these current active uh, Kaggle competition called TensorFlow Help Protect the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, let's um, let's uh, know the problem here a little bit and also the data before uh, starting our augmentation. So the goal of the competition is to accurately identify starfish or they are also called cots, that is coral eating crown of thorn starfish in a real time by building an object detection model trained on underwater videos of coral reefs. This way we can help researchers and scientists to control cots outbreak which are a threat to the Great Barrier Reef. And what is the problem here? So the problem is that a cots outbreak can have devastating impacts on an entire coral reef. And depending on the event, these uh, starfish could wipe out nearly all living corals. So the solution is to kill those starfish. And if only humans are employed, then that will be a hugely, hugely labor intensive process, almost becoming uh, impossible to execute in real time. So that's why robots are employed. And those robots are obviously, uh, obviously have a very advanced computer vision algorithm integrated cameras, and they detect those uh, cords underwater and kill them by chemical infusion. Now let's check out the data that has been given to us in this competition, the starting point. So if you go to uh, the data tab, you will get these 15.23 uh, GB of uh, image data and also uh, two CSV file which has uh, the labels. So uh, for, for this uh, particular video, I only uh, I uh, practically need just a single image because I'll be just applying in this video, I'll be just applying the augmentation on a single image. And also I need to know the uh, train.csv. I do not really need this train.csv for this particular video. Oh, I think I actually need this. Yeah, I, I need this train.csv. All right, so let's uh, let's uh, get to know this train.csv. So uh, these uh, train.csv dataset contain five columns. Uh, as you can see, video ID, sequence, video frame, sequence frame, and also I have uh, image ID and annotations these five columns and they actually help identify the position within the video the sequence of the dot jpg images within the train image folder so i have this train image folder and this train image folder has uh, three subfolders video 0 video 1 video 2 and each of these subfolders has almost like uh, 6 to 7000 uh, images so I think totally we have 21,000 or 22,000 plus images. So if you just can check a single image, random image here. So this is one single image. So we have like almost 21 to 22,000 images in this competition and they are all underwater. And in this image, uh, there will be some cords and those cords are identified by labeling them in this train.csv's annotation column. So I'm going to train.csv, I'm going all the way to the rightmost one and this is my annotation column and I can see that many of this annotation column is uh, uh, it's it, it just an empty array that means there is no cards in that particular image and those images are identified by this video ID and then sequence and video frame. So, and also sequence frame. So, uh, a particular row has no annotation value in the annotation column means that those images don't have any cords in them, whereas some of them has a particular location that is X at 559, Y213, width 50 and height 32. That means this is the location or position of the cords in that image. And uh, some of the image definitely can have multiple cords like there are some of the many of the images most of the images actually have just one cot in them but some of the images have multiple like two three four five even six cots and in that case you will see a longer location because then each of the individual location of each of the cots identified in the image will be given like this so for example this particular row has two cots in them uh, identified uh, 
uh, as chords that is one is this one and another one is this one uh, and uh, the complete location is given that is um, within the image the x and y value of the chords location is this and width and height is also given and uh, for that another quick point on these um, uh, column headings so video id is the id number of the video the image was part of the video ids are uh, not really meaningfully ordered then i have uh, video frame uh, here on the third column okay i have sequence sequence is the id of a gap free subset of a given video the sequence ids are not meaningfully ordered as well and then i have sequ uh, video frame uh, video frame is the frame number of the image within the video uh, expect to see occasional gaps in the frame number from when the uh, when the diver surfaced and then i have sequence frame which is a frame number within a given sequence and for the fourth column image id this is the id code of the image in the format video id uh, then a single dash or single hyphen and then this is the video video uh, uh, frame so i have video this uh, say for example the first row my video id is zero and my video frame is 13 and that's why my image id will be in this format 0 hyphen 13 and lastly i have annotation i just uh, described that these actually are the location of the chords uh, so very much they are the bounding boxes uh, this is uh, uh, the correct term indeed the bounding boxes of any starfish detections in a uh, string format uh, that's what uh, this annotation column is and the total data set is reasonably large 15.23 gb so uh, for for doing your modeling that is uh, uh, doing actual deep learning model you mostly have to depend on kaggle gpu or collab gpu or otherwise if you have low powerful gpu in your local machine that will be enough as well but for this particular notebook that is for this video i have downloaded the entire data in locally and because i don't need to use gpu or anything because uh, this video i will only need a single image and i'll be running image augmentation technique on that single image so i don't need much of a processing power here all right with that introduction let's uh, go to start our code so i'm in my vs code and the first cell is just importing all the libraries. Uh, so it's all the standard libraries that is Pandas, Seaborn, Matplotlib. But the most important thing for this video is the albumentation library. So I'm importing these uh, albumentation. If you don't have it, uh, just install it by doing pip install albumentations. So first I'm just uh, reading the train.csv that was there in the data set. So uh, I'm just doing pandas read CSV and uh, I'm also defining a root directory because I'll be I'll have to use this directory again and again. Uh, just run this cell. All right, so this is my data set. That's exactly what we saw in the Kaggle web page itself. That is video ID, sequence, video frame, sequence frame, image ID, and annotation. So this annotation is the most important thing required for this particular notebook here because uh, I have to uh, show the bounding boxes actually in the image. And uh, yeah, anyway, so let's go ahead and let's see. So then uh first is uh before before jumping on the uh, augmentation first quickly understand the data a little bit uh so that we can have a better idea about the data set so first uh let's count the how many images uh are there from each of the three videos so uh, we uh, like i said that we have three videos here uh let's uh, go back to our kaigal page under the train images we have we have these three subfolder video 0 video 1 and video 2 and uh, so i have to figure out uh, that what is the distribution or what is the number of that is what is the count how many images are there under each of these subfolder so mm, mm, i'm just doing that sns.count plot and let's run this and before jumping on to the augmentation part i just want to do a very basic level of data pre-processing and also a little bit of eda to know the data and the distribution of the data so i can have a better idea about the whole data set so first uh, let's uh, define a few variables and also to these data frame that i have already from the train.csb let's add another column 
with the path of these images that is i will have almost 22000 images and i just want to add another column where uh, that column will contain the in the full path and that is a directory path of the images uh, very simple code i'm just using os.path.join and then root directory train images and then i have videos and also uh, i am getting the video id as type string and the video frame as type string as well and then adding dot jpg to the entire thing so let's run this all right now i have a path of the image as uh, another column and that will have the entire path so in this case for the for this notebook i have my uh, entire data set saved in a file called input directory called input and within that i have tensorflow grade barrier reef and uh, so on all right now uh, uh, let's uh, let's if you just want to print okay now let's just uh, count the number of uh, images that i have in these uh, three video classes video id classes remember in the original data set we saw three subfolders video 0 video 1 and video 2 so i just want to count the number of images within this each uh, each uh, subfolder so i can have a idea of the distribution of the data okay before that let's quickly see uh, what this path actually is so let's just print df train and just print a path of image just print the first one let's zero uh yeah that's exactly i wanted that uh, each of these value is just the entire path up to the dot jpg file all right now i want to calculate i want to see the count of how many images in this folder that's this code sns.countplot and i'm just passing df train and only the video id column and then plot it and okay i got this beautiful plot so zero one and two so these are the three videos so it looks like they are almost kind of there is no skewed data i mean in terms of video id they are almost equivalently distributed and now uh let's uh, let's check if the data is uh, balanced or imbalanced that is uh, 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 the whole data in in the whole data set the key point uh, for this uh, project is to find the bounding boxes so let's check how many of these images have a bounding box labeled that is they have a, a starfish identified and how many of them without any bounding box that is they don't have a starfish in those images and for that uh one second my code will be this so all i'm doing uh, i'm creating two variables with annotation and without annotation and the condition is that with annotation will have no empty arrays and without annotation will have the annotation column uh, equal to equal to only the empty arrays and then i have these labels uh, variable defined with a list of without bounding box with bounding backs and then i'm just going to now plot a figure with geo dot figure and uh, to y i'll be passing without annotation and with annotation these two variables and uh, yeah so let's run this code it should work uh, good yes so i got this plot so all these uh, 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 images that is uh, uh, looks like almost kind of 18 to 19000 without bounding box so they don't have any bounding boxes and with bounding boxes only like up to 5000 so obviously the data is uh, very much imbalanced that is most of the data points have no bounding boxes M most of the images i mean all right now um, uh, for selecting an image before so now i'm going to almost start um, uh, applying an augmentation for a particular image but for that i first have to select an image to apply all my augmentation from album albumentation package so for that i need to find images which has quite a few bounding boxes because as you saw it data is imbalanced most of the images don't have any bounding boxes but now i not only want to find an image which has at least single but i want to find an image which has multiple 
simple bounding boxes in the annotation column basically these images have uh, many starfish identified within it so that i can clearly show it it, it is uh, just the reason is to for me to find this particular image with many bounding boxes is that i can show exactly what we are talking about and see the effects of my augmentation clearly so for that uh, uh, let's first create a data frame for all images with more than five augmentation or more than five sorry more than five annotations that is the annotation column will have more than five elements in it and for that first let's find out how many bounding boxes are there in each annotation column and to count the number of bounding boxes in the annotations column there are a couple of methods i can apply here uh, first let's look at the data again that now, this is my original this is my df train this is the data frame that i have from the train.csv and what i want to do is i want to count all the i want to get all the uh, rows that have uh, multiple bounding boxes and uh, say for example this number this 16 this one has one single bounding box defined that is only one single annotation because it's a single element x y width height that consists a single element so if these row had multiple starfish in it or if it had multiple annotation then this element will be multiple so one way for me to calculate how many uh, how many annotations are there in a single row is just to calculate number of opening curly braces or i could also do number of closing curly braces uh, i could also actually do number of x uh, in each of this row so i can do any of these three methods so let's for me what i want i am doing here to count the number of bounding boxes in the annotation column i will be just counting the number of closing braces all right let's do that all right this is my code and all i'm doing that i'm creating a new column named number of b boxes and then from the annotation column i'm applying a lambda function that will calculate that will uh, that will count the number of these closing braces closing curly braces indeed all right now uh, yeah now let's run this cell all right now i got these uh, number of b boxes let's print the top maybe 40. Uh, all right yeah you see that uh, uh, from here i'm getting starting to get multiple bounding boxes here okay so uh, let's check out the value uh, if i'm getting it properly uh, the number 36 yes so this 36th number row uh, has these uh, annotation defined within them so it has that means it has two of them two uh, annotations within it and now i just want to see a distribution of these bounding boxes because looks like uh, many of them have i don't know probably many of them have one bounding boxes or maybe zero bounding boxes that we many of them have zero that we already saw but within these i just want to see that how many have them uh, what is the distribution of this number of uh, bounding boxes then i can decide uh, that uh, for my augmentation uh, for my uh, image that on which i'll be applying the augmentation what's the number of bounding boxes i can practically choose so let's plot a distribution uh, code here so this is my uh, this is my bar plot that will be plotting the number of b boxes this column that is px dot bar and uh, from the df train i'm only taking the number of b boxes i'm making val uh, which is a value counts this is what i want to get uh, value counts of these column and i'm also dropping all the zeros and title is title i'm giving okay the other things are all standard code all right now let's run it awesome so this is my distribution of the bounding boxes plot of number of b boxes so uh, you can see the maximum number of images has only single bounding box so this this is a value one here one two three four five yeah so this is uh, one and so maximum number of them have only one bounding boxes and uh, many that means only one uh, annotation and then uh, for the number two i have uh, much lesser probably it's 800 or 900 
and uh, as it goes uh, yeah it continuously goes on increasing uh, decreasing indeed all right now i uh, want to get um, all right so now if i want to get only those rows only those images from the data frame where i have only uh, five or more or i don't know probably four or more bounding boxes first i have to change the annotation uh, column from uh, uh, it, it is already string uh, string type so i have to change it to a uh, list type so let's do that with this code so i'm only applying on the annotation column apply and ast dot literal eval and then uh, also uh, let's check out the df trend dot head okay now my annotation will be a list type so that now i can apply a condition on it uh, to give me uh, all the rows where i have the number of bounding boxes equal to equal to four uh, so that i can select any one of them so my code for this is yeah this is that so i am creating another data frame where my annotations are not equal to empty array empty list or em, uh, these empty brackets and um, uh, also my df train uh, b box would be number of b boxes equal to equal to four so let's uh, print that all right looks like yeah it's working so now i have uh, this data frame has only those images where the number of annotations are four so there are four cards identified or four bounding boxes in them all right so now i'm ready then uh, to select any of those images as my uh, image to apply all my augmentation i can choose 2639 2638 or uh, even more i mean uh, there are probably many of them right let's just print 20 first yeah so quite a few of them all right now uh, let's just uh, select the first one two six three five okay and print that image this is my code uh, so all i'm doing is uh, i'm taking this from the path of the image uh, remember that this path of the image has the entire path in the directory and from there i'm choosing 2635 that is this very first image which has got four number of bounding boxes and then with the image module uh, i am uh, opening that image and displaying that awesome so this is that image under the c and uh, uh, th this image has four bounding boxes that is four annotation I, i'm going to print that bounding boxes that is for example you can already see with the naked eye that this is a cot and uh, i am going to uh, actually print those bounding boxes or those uh, annotation within uh, on top of this image so that i can actually visualize that how these bounding boxes are are printed So this is what I'm going to do in this uh, next step. That is drawing the bounding boxes with image draw dot draw, and the code for that will be this. So I am first defining a function get image with rectangle that will make use uh, that will first get the shape and the shape uh, or shape are just these x0 y0 x1 y1 values. That is, if you go to the documentation, you will see this clearly written that. Uh, uh, four points to define the bounding box sequence of either uh, x0 y0 x1 y1 either in this form or you have to pass x0 y0 x1 y1 so i'm making use of the second uh, format here so that my shape is uh, box uh, box then x value y value and then uh, box x plus box width and box y plus box height and remember from our original data frame that we have all of these uh, defined let's check out again yeah so this is this is one example value that uh, annotation will have x y and width and height and with that you can get your x0 y0 and x1 y1 values for your image draw dot draw function and then ultimately this function will return me the image after drawing this rectangle and then what i'm doing is first i'm getting the random image path uh from my data frame df.trend and my number we already selected this 2635 as an image to image for experimentation for this particular notebook 
and then uh, the, that random image will be need to be opened with image dot open and then just I am passing these uh, random image to my this function get image with rectangle. Uh, so this uh, get image with rectangle will take an image and the image and an ID. So that's what I'm passing. So let's run this. And awesome. Now I have the same image. Now the bounding boxes are clearly drawn on this image. So there are that actually means there are four cots in this one uh, is annotated here. Another one is here. Third one is here and the fourth one is here. So now I'm fully ready to uh, start my augmentation. That is all the methods of the albumentation library. So for that, I first I want to define a function which will return me, which will take an image as an input and also an augmentation method as an input and return me an augmented image after applying the augmentation method on the image. So if you go to the official documentation of this albumentation library all methods for example are defined like this that is for example this is one method channel shuffle i'm going to indeed use this method uh, in a while so uh, there are there are so many methods like this channel cla he uh, for uh, applying this then color jitter for applying color jitter all these methods so i have already uh, Im imported this alimentation library as a and i just have to apply all these different methods so let's uh, build the general function here is my function get augmented image this takes image and augmentation method as input and re and then applies the transform uh, by doing uh, a dot compose and remember a is my documentation library that I have imported at the very top at the very first cell of this notebook and then uh, it applies these um, these method on the with a dot compose and augmentation method and then uh, ultimately returns me the augmented image all right now Oh, one other quick point uh, just forgot to mention that this uh, return value augmented image from this function is a numpy array so to get the actual image you will need to use the image dot form array method to be applied on this all right now i'm ready to apply blob but because before that first quickly check my selected image so that was my selected image i'll be using this image selected and image selected display these two variable throughout the notebook uh, for each method that I'll be applying on them. So if you run this cell, this is the this is the image uh, for our entire notebook. All right, now blur. So why blur is needed in a deep learning project? And the reason is that if your production uh, images, that is when the model is actually implemented in production, that particular that production environment have many blur images involved then it is very much necessary that your training validation and testing set also need to have many blurred images but in your actual training data set that you have collected may not have many blurred images and that's why you have to apply this augmentation technique to make some of the training images blurred so your training during training your model can see enough of those blurred images which it will see anyway during the in in the actual production so that's kind of the fundamental basic reason and now my code to apply blur so i'll be using this is the code i'll be using these blur method of augmentation of uh, of albumentation library here p is the probability of applying the transform default value is 0 0.5 and remember this p is like almost the most common parameter that most or almost all of the augmentation uh, method of albumentation will take and uh, uh, the, and uh, this is exactly what it says that it is a probability of applying the transform apply for example it is here it is a probability of applying the blur and i have given a value of 1.0 to it and the default value if you don't give any value to p it will take 0 0.5 and then what i'm doing i'm creating my actual uh, uh, image uh, from image selected display we already had image selected display here with image dot open and then with np.array i'm converting that to a numpy array and then that np.image will be f f uh, then i'm defining a function actually to uh, uh, to do the augment blur augmentation of the blur and there i am 
uh, doing the uh, get augmented image we already defined this function this will actually apply these uh, augmentation here and for uh, our example in this cell the augmentation is a blur it will apply this blur and then return me the augmented image and then uh, that from that i am getting i am doing this get image with rectangle Oh, another quick point I forgot to mention that this return value augmented image will be in the NumPy array format. So to get the image, I will need to use image.form array. We will see about that in a second. So now I am going to do the blur. But before uh, applying the blur code, uh, quickly understand why we need blur in a deep learning model. And the reason is that uh, mostly in actual production environment, your um, uh, the image that will be fed to the model on which the model need to uh, uh, do a prediction that production environment will mostly have a blur image if this is the case then your training set validation set and testing set will also need to have a blur image but your actual training set that you have collected to be fed into the model may not have a blur image and that's why you have to create some blur image by applying this augmentation technique so that your model very much know what blur image is and they, the model gets actually trained on the blurred images as well so it can deal with the situation in the production environment all right with that now this is my code uh, okay before that i just want to uh, before now, I just want to check my actual image that I'll be applying the blur. So this is, these are the two variables that I'll be using throughout this notebook. And this image selected and image selected for display is the image on which I'll be applying all the methods. So let's run this code to see if it's working. Yes. So this is the image that we already saw in a uh, saw previously. And on this image, I'll be applying all the methods one by one. All right, now the first one is blur and this is my code for applying blur. So let's see what uh, I'm doing in this cell because the same exactly almost the same signature or the same format of code I'll be applying uh, probably 15, 20 times in this notebook for applying all the different uh, methods of augmentation. So first I am defining an augmentation variable which has these uh, augmentation methods specifically uh, for this cell. That is here I'm applying blur method of augmentation. So I'm using a dot blur and to this I'm passing p equal to 1.0. Here p denotes the probability of applying the transform and the default value is 0 0.5. But I'm giving here complete 100% probability which is 1. And then I am getting an np numpy array form of the image by using np.array and to that I'm passing image selected display the same one that we have defined here and then I'm defining another function uh, so this function uh, this function pretty much applies or uh, uh, implement this augmentation method on this image so this uh, our method takes a single parameter uh, image which will be our a selected image and then applies this get augmented image method that I have defined a while back and this method actually applies or uh, implements that augmentation on this image and then return me a numpy array and then uh, that from that return value of this get augmented image I am applying image dot form array to get the actual image because like I like I just discussed that this uh, uh, method get augmented image returns me a numpy array so I have to apply image.form array method on the return value and that's what I'm doing here that from array creates an image memory from an object exporting the array interface all right so now that I have the image I can apply again this get image with rectangle because remember this image that was returned and uh, on on the image that on which I applied this from array that don't have those rectangles that is bounding boxes drawn on them so I have to actually show the bounding boxes so that in the transformed image as well I can see clearly 
the annotations of the bounding boxes and that's why i'm bringing in this get image with rectangle that we have defined a while back and to this i'm passing these um, this image and just the id the id of the image you already know uh, that all our this notebook the, all the methods will be using the same image which is id number 2635 and that's exactly what i'm passing here and then finally i'm just displaying the image and then uh, i am invoking this function og blur and to this i am passing this actual image that is np image which is a numpy form of the image selected display now just run this uh, not defined okay i don't think i ran the previous cell let's uh, let's run it run it again from here yeah so now we see that uh, after applying this blur effect this is the image i got you can obviously see this is clearly very much blurred and the bounding boxes are still there that this is the location of those annotation that is a this is the location of those four identified cots or starfishes and now i will also be applying two more blurs uh, median blur and gaussian blur so a quick note on uh, the median and gaussian blur that traditionally the median blur method has been very effective uh, when removing salt and pepper noise so this type of noise is exactly what it sounds like that is imagine taking a photograph putting it on your dining room table and sprinkling some salt and pepper on top of it using the median blur method you could remove the salt and pepper from your image and again methods such as averaging and gaussian compute means or weighted means for the neighborhood this average pixel intensity may or may not be present in the neighborhood but by definition in the case of median blur the median pixel must exist in our neighborhood by replacing our central pixel with the median rather than the average we can substantially reduce noise and that's why median blur has been very popular over the years uh, all right now uh, i will be again bringing in albumentation median blur method to have my image uh, applied the median blur and this is the code again i'm remember now the same kind of format and same kind of method signature i'll be using for us uh, for my uh, the next uh, 10 to 15 uh, augmentation technique that i will apply here so uh, like previously i use the same that i first define a uh, define a variable here with the augmentation so in the previously it was blur and now it is a median blur and then the same same uh, kind of method where i'm passing that augmentation and then creating the image and then uh, from that image i'm using uh, image.form array to get the actual image and then also applying the the bounding box with this function get image with rectangle and finally displaying the image and when i when i invoke this function definitely i have to pass the numpy array of the image and that's why before passing the Im uh, selected image that is image selected display i have to convert it to np.array so if you run this cell i will get a median blur oh okay so i think um, i have to run my previous cell and now i'm running it again yes i got the median blur all right the next one is gaussian blur then the gaussian blurring uses weighted mean where neighborhood pixels that are closer to the central pixel contribute more weight to the average and as the name suggests gaussian smoothing is used to remove noise that approximately follows a gaussian distribution and here is a code again exactly the same format i'm using a dot gaussian blur function of albumentation and then using this same variable inside my function to generate the image applying from array to get the actual image and then applying invoking this function get image with rectangle to draw my bounding boxes and finally i am uh, displaying the image with this little uh, loop and let's run this cell all right this is gaussian blur okay uh, here a quick note for uh, all of these methods i'm using this little loop over here for i in range one because here the main purpose is to create many augmented images uh, we, after applying some augmentation technique 
so here just for showing i'm using one but in actual project when you are actually creating many other images to to expand your training set then obviously you will be using here uh, a much larger number it could be 2000 5000 or whatever depending on the amount of extra images that you need all right next one is downscale and the downscale it's obvious decreases image quality by downscaling and ups upscaling back so it takes uh, some extra parameter and they are scale mean and scale max and obviously scale mean takes a float and is the lower bound on the image scale and should be less than one and scale max is the uh, float and is the upper bound on the image scale and here's my code for downscaling again just a uh, simple code i'm um, invoking the downscale of augmentation and the rest of the other two code is exactly like the previous cell let's run it all right i got a downscale version just by looking at the picture you can see that um, uh, it has indeed been downscaled now the pixels are much more showing really badly and the next one is image compression and uh, what it does is decreases jpeg and webp compression of an image uh, it again takes two parameter quality lower and quality upper uh, and the quality lower means lower bound on the image quality should be in 0 to 100 range for jpeg and 1 to 100 for webp and quality upper is again it's a float number and it's the upper bound on the image quality should be in 0 to 100 range for JPEG and 1 to 100 for WebP. And now the code. All right, this is my image compression. Just the same code. Only thing I'm changing is uh, a dot image compression. That's a function from Augment from uh, Albumentation and uh, here is a little documentation it clearly says decreases jpeg webp compression of an image let's run this cell all right this is the compressed version all right next one is clarity augmentation under it i will be applying a few algorithms here one is sharpen and then cla he which is called apply contrast it, it is contrast limited adaptive histogram equalization and then emboss these three methods will be under clarity augmentation so the first one is sharpen the same kind of code only thing i'll be using a dot sharpen of augmentation and let's run this and this is my sharpened code obviously by just by looking at it you can clearly see it's a sharpened picture and then come contrast limited adaptive histogram equalization to the input image so uh, uh, so histogram equalization is uh, another image processing technique to increase global contrast of an image using the image intensity histogram the equalized image has a linear cumulative distribution function this method needs no parameters but it sometimes result in unnatural looking image so one alternative to regular histogram equalization technique is uh, called adaptive histogram equalization or ahe which improves local contrast of an image by computing several histograms corresponding to different section of an image and it differs from ordinary histogram equalization uh, because uh, the ordinary one uses only one histogram to adjust global contrast however AHE has a tendency to over amplify noise in relatively homogeneous regions of an image. So then came CLAHE or contrast limited adaptive histogram equalization. This was developed to prevent the over amplification of noise resulting from AHE. So in gist, the CLAHE, that is a contrast limited adaptive histogram equalization, limits the contrast enhancement of AHE by clipping the histogram at a predefined value before computing the cumulative distribution function. All right, that was enough of theory. Now, this whole thing has been implemented in our albumentation package, and here is the code simple a dot clahe that's all you need and p is the probability and here i'm passing the probability as 1.0 uh, because i definitely do want to see the 100 uh, percent want to see this effect now let's run the cell and that's my uh, clahe augmented image 
all right next one within this uh, section of uh, within this section is emboss so i am still within the this clarity augmentation section first one was sharpen then cla he and then emboss this uh, so emboss uh, for emboss as well i just have to use the method of albumentation and here is a code a dot emboss run this and i get an embossed image all right now that was uh, the clarity augmentation part and now color augmentation under the color augmentation i'll be using a couple of methods the first one will be hue saturation value then rgb shift then random gamma all right now the first one is hue saturation uh, and again this is just this randomly changes the hue saturation and value of the input image here is a uh, one second here is the code a dot hue saturation run this cell and i get the resultant augmented image next one is rgb shift and this randomly shift values for each channel of the input rgb image here is a code a dot rgb shift and run this all right this is the result and the last one under the color augmentation is random gamma that i want to use here and i just need to use this code a dot random gamma and run this cell all right that's that's my result and now i come to elastic transform this is a special function augmented function augmentation function of albumentation uh, this is one of the non-rigid transformation provided in albumentation there are some write-up in the documentation i definitely recommend you read about this and some of the other uh, in these non-rigid transformation section are grid distortion and optical distortion uh, especially in medical imaging problem these kind of function is very important so elastic transform and grid distortion and optical distortion is very important for uh, to be applied on medical images here i'm just using the elastic transform here a dot elastic transform run this and i get the transformed image all right now the random brightness contrast obviously it randomly changes the brightness and contrast of the input image that's my code run this and i get randomly changed brightness this one looks like randomly has increased the brightness quite a bit and then i have channel shuffle channel shuffle again randomly rearranges channels of the input rgb image that's my code run this and looks like my red channel has been augmented and i see a completely reddish image as a result all right and last one i have a composition augmentation function so in this function i will be uh, actually applying uh, probabilistically quite a few uh, quite a few augmentation method in a single function so it's very easy very very simple and actually i have taken this one from their uh, one of their guideline documentation so first just i'm importing separately you could you could of course use a dot sharpen a dot emboss a dot the name of the method but here i'm specifically importing all the individual methods from albumentation so that my the function that i'm going to now have that looks little bit simpler and the function that i am talking about is this so strong AUG, this is uh, this will apply a composition of augmentation. So what I'm doing is I'm making use of this compose function uh, of albumentation, and then I'm using the one off. This is also one of the inbuilt function of uh, albumentation, and then you can pass many many methods inside it with the corresponding probability value. So for example, the, in the first one off, I'm passing motion blur median blur blur gaussian blur and glass bar then i'm passing a sh another single one which is shift scale rotate then i am also passing another one off within that i'm passing optical distortion grid distortion hue saturation value and the last one of one of has all the all um, all the image uh, image sharpening kind of methods that is cla he uh, sharpen emboss random contrast random brightness all right now to run this i have to make use of the similar structure that 
uh, I am creating an augmentation variable from this function. Now, no more I am using the previous uh, kind of uh, thing. Previously, I was using augmentation is a dot the specific method. Now, my uh, augmentation becomes output from this strong from this composition function, which is strong org. And the rest of the application of these lines remains just the same. And let's run this. All right. So it looks like I don't know. Probably my uh, the image was descaled or the scaling was reduced. That's what it looks like. If you run another time, some another random. Okay. Now this is blurred. If you run another time, okay. This did something else. So each time it will randomly choose one of them and apply it according to the probabilities given in this function. All right, so I think that pretty much uh, this one. Uh, so this was uh, my application of uh, the various augmentation method. There are plenty more augmentation method. If you uh, go to the documentation of uh, augmentation, you will find uh, many, many more ways to augment your image. Uh, and uh, yeah, that pretty much wraps up this video and all my upcoming videos will all be on some great computer vision projects and algorithm with PyTorch and TensorFlow. So stay tuned and if you have not subscribed yet, do subscribe. And if you like this video, smash the like button. Thank you for watching.